And so my Portuguese adventure comes to an end. Behind me, Portugal, and in front of me, across the river, Spain. second fall here in this uh, little alleyway of sorts. Uh, I think it's an not abandoned uh, railroad that's been converted into a, into a greenway cycleway and yeah I mean the weather's beautiful up top but here it doesn't get much sun so the track is super slick and uh, yeah, I just lost my front wheel while I was riding quite quickly. So, yeah, I was having fun, I had a big grin on my face, I was enjoying it. Slipped, crash into the uh, thorns. My fingers all bloody and torn from a thorn, and uh, I'm just sorting my, my bags out there. They were stripped off on the one side, but nothing broken. That's good. That's good. All the clips are good on the bags. Happy days. So uh, I'm gonna gently ease myself back onto the bike. Greenway has turned into uh, a bit of a, uh, a bath uh, and sticky mud now. Might go as a chocker for the night. Again, here's another pond.
Columbia is the town center. to sleep tonight and I thought I found something down by a river, some trees, as you can see, some weeds. Um, but yeah, very sticky mud and a river. I don't think I'm going to cross this. I don't want to pick mud from my wheels again. Found a place uh, to camp. Uh, that river crossing is uh, a kilometer that way. I just found a building here and came here. There's open space and uh, it's very quiet. Sound of the birds. And I've got Carmona up on the hill. Quite a chilly but sunny morning again. Just uh, pushing on through the fields here. It's pretty smooth, there's no mud. Cruising. It's meant to be going up here, it's meant to be a road, but there ain't nothing, it's just a field. And uh, not quite a dry river, it's not running, but it looks hellish muddy, hellish muddy. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can find a way around this particular obstacle and make my way up that hill between the olives down to Asuna, another 15 kilometers, I think. I'm not sure. Oh well, let's see what happens. the earth straight into a bit of a beast of a climb this morning uh, Los Cabellos the village I'm heading towards Ronda 50k away uh, but yeah it's very hilly today uh, I've come up a few hundred meters already got that to come I'm taking it nice and tranquilo uh, just talking to the sheep quick and uh, Admiring the view.
very well last night. The hotel's a bit of a shithole. Very cheap. <laughs> I think I picked up flu there. Morocco is so close. I'm really nervous. A bit scared. It's all very unknown and something completely different from Europe, I'm sure. Well, let's see. I'm about 100 k away from Malaga. I've just got this mountain to negotiate. Ooh <laughs> See Ronde down there, way in the distance. Massive canyon. There's a mountain culture surfing up to the top. Blue sky, sun. I think just about to reach Puerto del Viento. Less than 50 kilometers to Malaga now. I'm feeling it though. I'm feeling uh, the last two days through the mountains, the climbing. Feeling the lack of sleep at that shitty hotel. I'm feeling the cold. And oh, I just want to rest. Cycling in Africa, in Spain. Bizarre. Quite exotic. Castle, home. All these palm trees are making me feel like I'm in the desert. Pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Exotic. Exotic was definitely the word that night as I wheeled myself around Malia for the first time. There was very much a sense of excitement when I touched down on African soil for the first time in years, and my nerves dissolved and the palm trees are familiar. I'd only planned to spend two nights in Malia, but a faulty sine wave cycle reactor forced me to extend my stay while I waited for the replacement to arrive. I thought I might as well work while I waited and I agreed to a teaching contract until June. And of course, we all know what happened a couple of months later. And here I still am, on the edge of Africa, waiting for the borders to open. But as I can't go south, I must go north. So in the summer of 2020, I had the opportunity to explore the southern region of Spain, Andalusia.